last time with that uh, right setup. So we got a bunch of ball games going on at the park over here. So that's always a good opportunity to bring a dog by them. Now, um, the goal is always just to have them around that stuff and do obedience. I don't really care. Um, she doesn't have to be perfect at it. She doesn't have to take it all really well. Now, the wind's blowing pretty good down here and it seems to add another element of, uh, of caution in her. Like I'm seeing that she's a little more cautious. Now she's staying focused well, um, pretty well. And, and that's the key to it really. So if a dog can focus on you, then they can handle all the other stressors that they would that you would need them to handle. Um, so yeah, so as we're as we're walking through here, we know there's going to be some sounds that happen that could startle her. Um, you know, so we want to be prepared for that. People are going to try to talk to her. Um, and a lot of times, I found if it's like a little kid, especially a little girl, she actually she wants to meet them. She's a lot more hesitant of man men so I'm not telling you anything you don't know um wait let's see I want her to stop back here wait just when we get her to stop you can see she heard somebody talking and as we stop like her tail just started pointing straight forward and stuff so, so there's some stuff going on all around and it's it's hard for her but but as we're watching she's doing it he'll push the button on the e-collar because as I said, hail and come on. Um, she was so deep into her avoidance and fear that she didn't listen. But the good news is, is the e-collar was able to work through, you know, get through to her go. when uh, when she was otherwise like in kind of a self-preservation kind of mode. Now she puts her mouth on me once in a while. I think it's, um, I think it's just like her kind of checking in, uh, you know, her just touching me and, and what she has to use is her mouth. So it's, I think it is what it is when you get a great game. I'm, I'm sure you kind of know that there's going to be some slobber. We come over here and do it down and stay with her. Hazel down. I say down, give her the chance. Good girl. And then she kind of just, she settles in quickly. And then I'm going to have her process the stress of this situation. we got people close by. I've got a game over here. Um, so, um, yeah, so just kind of wait. Just let her process. And she's actually doing well with it now, so I'm pretty proud of her. Hazel, Hill, come on. Hill. Now, you know, she's kind of guessing where I'm going. So rather than go straight ahead, Hill. What I gotta do is kind of go away from her. He'll come on. Until good. Until she like really comes in. Because she didn't really, uh, she didn't really, she wasn't dedicating to it. She was like beating me to the gate. She's like, no, we're, we're out of here and I'm leading the charge. And that's where I say, no, like you, you have to pay lots of attention. Good girl. Wait. He'll. Good job, girl. Hill, so I'm standing right here. Hill, because she's just kind of hanging back on leash. Hill, come on. Now I'm going to go in. No, no. I'm going to go in the other way just because. No, no. Just because she's so, um, she's so flighty there. Come on, Hill. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through this situation again. Because something's triggering her where she's panicking. Hill, come on. And, and if she can, no, no. Um, you know, so she's going to fighting the leash, so I think, I think the thing is, when, when this happens, we just repeat until they do it right, so, and I feel like a lot of people will come up a little bit short there, he'll, um, when the dog is blowing them off and, um, and, and, and really worried, no, he'll, so that was it, it's the ball, he'll, come on. We're gonna endure a couple more sounds. So, and she did a lot better with that one. I don't know if you could tell. <clears throat> nope. Now, if I need to make a left hand turn, um, sometimes just step, uh, you know, into her. And she's just, he'll, 
Okay, so again, right there, she's just kind of fighting the leash. Go. Or just stay on the E. Come on. Until she resolves it. Come on. Hazel. Good girl. Good girl. So we don't get loud, we don't get mad, but we also don't go anywhere until she obeys the command. And for some reason, the impact of these balls are just are huge from her. But when she comes home to you guys, this is exactly what kind of thing you should try to do with her twice a week. Just so you're getting out there, um, you're doing obedience, you're giving her something to focus on, and then um, you're leaving when you say it's okay. Go. Good job. Hazel, down. <laughs> so even though she was slow on that, she was still going, so I didn't do any stim. Hazel, heel. Heel. And pushing the button now again, like she's trying to beat me to the door. So I go the other way. Good. And then now that she heals to me, I can I can go that way. What happens though, if we accommodate them as they're going into flight and, and we just let her like pull us through, because that's the whole thing. Every time I go back towards the, the complex, that's when she's getting into these it's when she's like kind of fighting me on it where she's like, no, I'm just gonna pull hard on leash. And the key is you just work through it. So there's a lot to a lot to gain by working working through these stressors right here because uh, she she's kind of just living in this emotional help in this emotional world where like we do whatever emotions dictate. We you know help. Um, we get scared. We run. We get threatened. We fight. Um, and that's when we do that um well when dogs do that some dogs make good decisions um her decisions are a little bit self-destructive because um because it can get her in trouble so oh, there. She, she's pooping she pooped close to the bags though so. all right he'll all right i'm gonna clean up this poop 